Hi everyone, this presentation is on the Deming's 14 principles and 7 daily diseases of management. William Edwards Deming is known as the father of the Japanese post-war industrial revival and was regarded by many as the leading quality guru in the United States. Deming created 14 principles for management that summarized his business philosophy. The principles became a basis for transformation of industry. The 14 principles apply anywhere from small organization to large ones, to the service industry as well as to manufacturing. They apply to any, div any division within a company. Deming's advocacy of the plan, do, check, act, cycle, his 14 points and 7 deadly diseases have had tremendous influence outside manufacturing and have been applied in other arenas. Create a constancy of purpose focused on the improvement of products and services. Deming was very critical of the short-term thinking of American management, which tends to be driven by quarterly business results and does not always focus on strategies that benefit the organization in the long run. Management should constantly try to improve product design and performance. This must include investment in research, development and innovation will have a long-term payback to the organization. Adopt a new philosophy that recognizes we are in a different economic era. Reject poor workmanship, defective products or bad service. It costs so much to produce a defective unit as it does to produce a good one and sometimes more. The cost of dealing with scrap, rework and other losses created by defectives is an enormous drain on company resources. Do not rely on mass inspection to control quality. All inspection can do is sort out defectives and at that point it is too late. The organization already has paid to produce those defectives. Inspection typically occurs too late in the process, it is expensive and it is often ineffective. Quality results from prevention of defective through process improvement, not inspection. Fourth principle, do not award business to suppliers on the basis of price alone but also consider quality. Price is a meaningful measure of a supplier's product only if it is considered in relation to a measure of quality. In other words, the total cost of the item must be considered, not just the purchase price. When quality is considered, the lowest bidder frequently is not the low cost supplier. Preference should be given to suppliers who use modern methods of quality improvement in their business and who can demonstrate process control and capability. An adversarial relationship with suppliers is harmful. It is important to build effective long-term relationships. Coming to fifth principle, focus on continuous improvement. Constantly try to improve the production and service system. Involve the workforce in these activities and make use of statistical methods, particularly the stati statistically based problem solving tools. Sixth principle. Practice modern training methods and invest in on-the-job training for all the employees. Everyone should be trained in the technical aspects of their job and in modern quality and productivity improvement methods as well. The training should encourage all employees to practice these methods every day. Too often employees are not encouraged to use the results of training and management often believes employees do not need training or already should be able to practice the methods. Many organizations devote little or no effort to training. Seventh principle, improve leadership and practice modern supervision methods. Supervision should not consist merely of passive surveillance of workers but should be focused on helping the employees improve the system in which they work. The number one goal of supervision should be to improve the work system and the product. Principle 8. Drive out fear. Many workers are afraid to ask questions, report problems, or point out conditions that are barriers to quality and effective production. In many organizations, the economic loss associated with fear is large. Only management can eliminate fear. Ninth principle. Break down the barriers between functional areas of the business. Teamwork among different organizational units is essential for effective quality and productivity improvement to take place. Principle 10. Eliminate targets, slogans and numerical goals for the workforce. A target such as zero defects is useless without a plan for the achievement of this objective. In fact, these slogans and programs are usually counterproductive. Work to improve the system and provide information on that. 11th Principle 
eliminate numerical quotas and work standards. These standards have historically been set without regard to quality. Work standards are often symptoms to management's inability to understand the work process and to provide an effective management system focused on improving this process. Coming to the twelfth principle, remove the barriers that discourage employees from doing their jobs. Management must listen to employee suggestions, comments and complaints. The person who is doing the job knows the most about it and usually has valuable ideas about how to make the process work more effectively. The workforce is an important participant in the business and not just an opponent in collective bargaining. Principle number 13. Institute an ongoing program of education for all employees. Education in simple, powerful statistical techniques should be mandatory for all employees. Use of the basic statistical process control, problem solving tools, particularly the control chart should become widespread in the business. As these charts become widespread and as employees understand their uses, they will be more likely to look for the causes of poor quality and to identify process improvements. Education is a way of making everyone partners in the quality improvement process. Coming to the final principle, create a structure in top management that will vigorously advocate the first 13 points. This structure must be driven from the very top of the organization. It must also include concurrent education or training activities and expedite application of the training to achieve improved business results. Everyone in the organization must know that continuous improvement is a common goal. Now coming to Deming 7 Deadly Diseases of Management. Deming frequently wrote and spoke about the 7 Deadly Diseases of Management and these diseases are listed here. First, lack of constancy of purpose. Second, emphasis on short-term profits. Third, evaluation of performance, merit rating and annual reviews of performance. Fourth, mobility of top management. Fifth, running a company on visible figures alone. Sixth, excessive medical costs. Seventh, excessive legal damage awards. He believed that each disease was a barrier to the effective implementation of his philosophy. Thank, Thank you. you.